I am glad that you are all here today. And before I get into my presentation, I would like to invite you to join me in taking three deep breaths to get our bodies and brains ready for learning. We're gonna move from the emotional center of our brain into the learning part of our brain. So when I ring my chime, we're gonna go ahead, take three breaths, and just I invite you to notice how you're feeling, not trying to change that, but just notice. So I want to start with a story. I want to introduce you to Josh. He is eight years old. He's a third grader. We all know Josh. Last night, his parents had a conflict. They were yelling and shouting. Voices were raised. Josh had a very hard time getting to sleep. He had an even harder time waking up because of all that commotion. So to get him up, his mom yelled at him again, Josh, get up, we're late. So Josh got out of bed, got dressed, ran. He got breakfast made for himself and his sister, and he ran out the door to catch the bus. He's running and running. The bus is right there. He catches up to the bus. The bus almost leaves, makes it on board. The bus driver says, Josh, sit down. Let's go. We're almost late. We got to go. Come on. Whew, made the bus. Gets to school. He realizes that he maybe forgot his cold lunch, so he takes some time on the yard to dig through his backpack and notice if he has his cold lunch or not. He had it, so that was good. But he wasted some time, got through the front door, and the front desk said, Josh, you're tardy, get to class, let's go. So Josh runs down the hall, opens the door, and the teacher says, all right, welcome to class, Josh. Do you have that homework from last night? Josh completely forgot about the homework with all the commotion going on at his house. Josh, at this, kind of had a tantrum. He threw his backpack against the wall, and he screamed, Ugh! The teacher said, young man, that is not how we enter the classroom. I'm going to march you down to the principal's office right now. Sits Josh down at the principal's office, and the teacher says, I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know what's wrong. He went from zero to ten in five seconds flat. The principal looked at Josh and said, what's wrong with you? There's two things with this that I want to kind of reevaluate. The first thing is, it's not what's wrong with Josh. It is what has happened to Josh. And the second thing is, Josh didn't come from zero to 10. He was at an eight when he walked in the front door, right? So we're gonna shift our mindset from what's wrong with you to what happened to you. In that story, how many adults along the way were living in the what's wrong with you mindset? The mom, the bus driver, the front desk. How much easier could Josh's morning have been if instead they were operating under the what happened to you mindset. Just think about that. I want to touch on childhood toxic stress for a minute, and that's when a child experiences strong, frequent, prolonged adversity, like physical, emotional abuse, chronic neglect, caregiver substance abuse or mental illness, um, exposure to violence, and even prolonged economic hardship without adequate adult support. These toxic stresses, without that adult support, will have lifetime lasting um, changes on that child's brain development, on their immune system, higher likelihood of alcoholism, um, higher likelihood of mental illness. It even can lead to a shorter life expectancy. It literally changes that child's brain development. So when Josh freaked out and threw his backpack and screamed, that wasn't Josh, you know, trying to be mean or lash out. That was actually a biological adaptation that's maybe allowed Josh to cope, to survive that long. Remember, it's not what happened to you. I mean, it's not what's wrong with you, it's what happened to you. So the brain science on this has been done, and we know the effects of childhood toxic stress has on development and health. They last a lifetime. However, now that we know that and we study that, and we can predict that, we can prevent it. So what do I mean by SEL? Well, that stands for social and emotional learning. Let's take the definition from the Collaborative for Academic and Social Emotional Learning. It is 
the process through which children and adults acquire and effectively apply the knowledge, attitudes, and skills necessary to understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. And they lay this out in an awesome graphic here. So in the middle, that's SEL. Self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, social awareness. I teach that in a classroom. That's the first ring. School-wide practices and policies, that's the second ring. That's the bus driver. That's the front desk. That's the teacher and principal. The third ring, homes and communities, that's us. Right. So there's a magazine, Inc. Magazine, and they have the top 10 skills that will be most desired by employers by 2020, according to the World Economic Forum. And I just invite you to notice, of these skills, which ones are related to social and emotional learning. All 10 skills are social and emotional learning related. So this isn't just some hippie class that schools offer. This is a reality that the world is looking for. So we're going to go back to that shifting mindset from what's wrong with you to what happened to you. This is the same for adults as well. Many adults carry that childhood toxic stress with them. It maybe has manifested into their own behavioral adaptations, and sometimes those behaviors don't align with what society says is normal, right? And when we see adults doing that, sometimes we may feel ourselves getting upset with them or jumping into a judgment or maybe even thinking, what's wrong with you? So I want to tell you a story. I was sitting in the uh, eye clinic waiting to have my exam, and the gentleman walks in, storms to the clerk and says, I'm here to pick up my glasses. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. The truck got delayed. They'll be here tomorrow. What do you mean they'll be here tomorrow? They said they'll be here today. I get my glasses today. Come on. Nothing I can do, the truck is delayed. This is a bunch of, oh, and he storms out of there. And I think three people in that situation could have benefited from practicing SEL skills. I could have benefited because I found myself thinking, what's wrong with that guy? You don't yell at a clerk, right? There's no excuse to yell at her, but what's, what's wrong with her? He could have benefited from SEL, you know, taking some deep breaths before interacting, maybe understanding things he can't control. And I think that the clerk could have benefited as well to not let that be a personal insult on her. Um, however, not everybody has had the opportunity to hone their SEL tools, to build that SEL toolbox. And there are many ways, individually and community-wide, to build those tools and keep them sharp. Um, remember those three breaths we took at the beginning of the talk? Put those in your toolbox. They're important. So. Looking around, people in the community are the stakeholders of SEL, and we are all members of that community. So ultimately, it starts with all of us. It only takes a small pebble to ripple across an entire pond. And some pebbles you may carry with you might be taking three breaths. Other pebbles you may carry with you can be changing those red lights and traffic to a simple mindfulness reminder instead of hand gesturing to the car next to you and honking your horn, maybe taking those breaths and looking around. Um, a, a pebble you can throw in a pond could be self-care. Another pebble you could toss in our pond is listening to your family and friends. And a pebble that I want you to think about today is maybe getting involved with your local schools, organizations, and nonprofits that are likely to support and encourage SEL within our community. So to end our time together here, I'm going to ring the chime one more time, and we're going to take three more breaths. And I invite you to notice and think about what pebbles you can toss into our pond. Thank you so much.